a little bit of defining just to get us all on the same page because like in my world of innovation, I think peak performance and flow are words that if you ask 10 people their definition, you'd probably get 10 different answers. And probably the same person has five answers because we don't really know what it means. How do you how do you define it and how do you look at it? Well, I define peak performance as getting a biology to work for us rather than against us. Like that's just loosely as an operational. Flow, on the other hand, there's a science, the science of flow um, dates back to the late 1870s. Um, in fact, the word flow dates back even even earlier in the original German that it was used in, which was Rausch. Um, but uh, so this idea is not new. The term is not new. Scientists define flow as an optimal state of consciousness. When we feel our best and we perform our best, that is not a particularly useful definition, but it's a good place to start. More specifically, we are talking about any of those moments of rapt attention, total absorption. You get so focused on the task at hand that everything else just seems to disappear. Time is going to pass strangely. It's going to slow down. You'll get a freeze from a factor, speed up, self-awareness, uh, self-consciousness, the inner critic, the voice in our heads can diminish, get really quiet. And throughout all aspects of performance, both mental and physical are going to just soar through the roof. So you said, um, there's a couple of things that you said that's kind of really about like your biology working for you, right? That's kind of peak performance and flow being in that state. So here's my question for you, Stephen. It, it feels like uh, we're our own worst enemies. Like we self-sabotage ourselves and work against ourselves. And, you know, I've always wondered, you know, is that biology? Is that experience stacking? Is that patterns? Is that, is that just kind of life and what we think we know to be true? And, and, and I guess what I'm asking is, how do we break those patterns? Because like peak performance, I want flow. I want peak performance. I want to move forward. Yet I kind of find that sometimes I work against myself. And, you know, the most basic example, and this isn't necessarily with peak performance particularly, but is like, I don't feel well. Or I've had a bad day, so I go eat a whole chocolate cake. I know that's a bad habit, but I still go do it anyway because that's my habit. So I just want to get your perspective on, I mean, is that even I'm kind of talking in circles here because there's eight questions in one, but yeah, I think there so th there's two issues here. Neither are this. Is, I'm gonna. I'll try to answer quickly, but these are really one issue is we are foundationally humans, homeostatic organisms. We like equilibrium. So anything that takes more energy, we resist. And flow is a high energy state. Peak performance is a high energy state. So getting the body used to performing at that level, right? You hear about in. The NBA, they're always talking about, oh, this is a team who thinks they can flip the switch and turn it on comes finals times. Most of us, for whatever reason, seem to think we're actually like NBA basketball players who can flip the switch, and right? And the truth of the matter is, even with NBA basketball players, this is best in the world, top 0.0001% at basketball, there's only a handful of, of, of men or women playing professional basketball who have that actual ability. For the most of us, the army has a motto, fight like you train, train like you fight. And it's because you're fighting against your own homeostatic organism. The other half of this is people don't like to say this out loud. They like to use words like habit. Oh, I have this, we are addiction machines. The human body, the human brain is designed to function by addiction. Modern life, whether or not we like it, whether or not we want to say it out loud, it is addiction management. When you are trying to not get distracted by the dopamine on your phone, right, generating phone, that's the rough equivalent of a cocaine addiction, right? Low-grade cocaine addiction, right? Those are the battles we fight on a daily basis with our technology, with the way we've designed our lives, with all those other stuff. And you're fighting addictive neurochemistry. You can't, when we say habit, we're like, oh, I've just got this habit. No, you're a habit creature or a habit machine and your body, your need for equilibrium will create what William James famously called the habit of inferiority.